Today we talk a little bit about functions. It's just a term kind of to get used to, more than anything today. Gentlemen, if you'd rather be out in the hall, I can make sure you don't have to be here. Pardon me, this is purely a voluntary thing. No, it isn't. It's not voluntary. Here is the deal with the function. You think about a function like this. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to think about it. But you think about a function a little bit like a machine, a function machine, where, I love drawing this, you put a number in, let's say 5, which is called your input number. A lot of times we call that the x number. You put it into this handy dandy little machine. Whilst it goes in the machine, we get this little thing that happens to it, a function machine. Let's say it's 3x plus 2. You put and drop your little number into the machine. 3 times x is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. And you spit out an output number, which we usually call the y number. Output, input. A lot of times, one type of function is that linear equation function where we had something like y equals 1 half x plus 2. Have we done these before? Where this is the rule. You get to pick the input number. Here's the input. It goes through Mr. Function Machine, or blah, 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 and it comes out with that y number there. Usually, we draw it as a little table here. If I'm picking what number I want x to be, a logical choice would be what number for this? If you have 1 half x plus 2, what numbers probably do I want to pick to make my life simpler? Right? 2, because half of 2 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Maybe I want to pick 4, because I can take half of 4. Half of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Maybe I want to pick 6. Half of 6 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. Usually, you always kind of want to pick 0, because there's nothing easier than 0, because 0 times anything is 0, but plus 2 gives you plus 2. Okay. <coughs> these are the input numbers, and these are the out numbers. Now, the one thing you have to remember with functions, and this won't make any sense to you at all today, but someday you'll come back and say, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, and this will look like, what in the world? Okay. For... Oh no, she, she can feel your pen thing, and she did everything. For something to be a function, comma, this is an important little handy dandy thing here. For each input number, for each input number, which we think of as our x number, there can be one and only one output number. Okay, that means when the handy dandy little number goes through the machine, you only get one answer back. You don't get two answers back. Which you might say, well, when in the world would you ever get two answers back? When to which you might say, thank you. What was your question again, Evelyn? I forgot. Why in the world would you get two answers back? When in the world might you get two answers back? Well, here would be an example. If you have, by the way, we write things like this. In functional notation, you put f of x instead of y. Don't ask why, just understand it. If you had the function of x equals the square root of x, or y equals the square root of x. If I were making a table of these values, putting them in my little function machine, what numbers can I take the square roots of? 4. What is the square root of 4? What number times itself gives you 4? Not only 2, though. 
No, one. No, same number. No. Oh, same, same number. number. Same number. One and four are not the same. Four, okay. So, two and negative two. Two times two is four, as is negative two times negative two. You would get two different answers for the same one here. This is no a function can't happen. Not a good deal. So functions have to give you just one single answer there. Let me see what questions they ask you here. Going right to the chapter here. Um, Yolanda played a number game with Xavier. She used the equation to get it. Okay, sure, why not? Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you have this, oh, yeah, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this. Um, y equals, or f of x, let's put that in there too, just so we get used to seeing that. Y equals x plus 2. So here's my little function machine. I make a table, which we've done before. I think we have done one here. Have we not done this before? Okay. So I get to pick my x numbers. I'm going to pick uh, 0, 2, 3, and 5. What do I get for y? x plus 2, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. If I graph this, if I graph this, I get 0, 2, correct? Uh, 2, 4, 3, 5, and 5, 7. If you connect the dots, what a nice line that is. If you connect the dots and they form a line, guess what it's called? I know this, so this is a big jump for you. It's called a linear function. If it makes a line. And then we need to talk about this. We have what's called proportional and not proportional. And in order for functions to be proportional, they must be two things. For it to be proportional, it has to be linear. And number two, this will come up a lot, so make sure you know this. It must go through the origin. What is the origin, ladies and gentlemen? Zero, zero comma, zero. Yep. Zero, comma, zero. So the last one we just did is linear, but it is not proportional because it does not go through this point right here. It's a line, but it's not proportional. In order for things to go through to be proportional, it would have to look like this. y equals 3x. And then when you make your little table, when you do your little table, when x is 0, y has to be 0. So something will never be proportional if it has a plus or minus number after it. Because if I put a plus 2 in here, that changes this to a 2. When x is 0, y is 2. So you can never have that number and have it be proportional. Okay, It has to be just a single number in front of the x. Uh, let's say you put 2 in there, you get 6. Let's say you put 3 in there, you get 9. You put 1 in there, you get 3. If you graph this, 0, 0. 1, 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, and you get this line that goes through the origin, and it's a line. It is proportional. Thoughts on that? 
Let's graph one more thing. Maybe I should let you graph this. Let's say my function of x or y equals x squared. I should let you graph this, but I'll graph it. Why not? Somebody give me a number for x and tell me what y would be. Tyler Connor, when x is what, y is what? x can be 4 and y can be 16. Ah, 4 and 16. So let me give you another one. Parker. Um, eight, and eight, 8 times 8 is? Uh, 16. All right, you're getting out of my league as far as graphing. Think A wrote something simple here. 2. And y is? 4. Good. Another one? That one? 3 and 9. 3 and 9. One more. Please pick something like 0, huh, Grant? 0 and what? 0 and 0. and 0. Now, take a look if we graph this. Watch the excitement. The beauty and the excitement of math is something to behold, especially when you graph this function. Where is it? Yeah. 416. Oh boy. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. Uh, 2, 4. Let's get that one. 1, 2, 3, 4. Do we do 1? Let's do 1. 1. What's 1 squared? 1, 1. 1, 1. What is 0? Oh, you, know something, you know something we didn't do? We didn't do negative numbers. What if I put a negative 2 in there? Negative 2 times negative 2 is? 4. Positive. Positive 4. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. What about negative 1? Negative 1 times negative 1? 1, thank you very much. Check out this. Here is the graph of x squared. Let's do it in black. Shall <coughs> we? <coughs> we call that bad boy a parabola. Is that proportional? Why or why not? Abram? Going through the origin. What? Going through the origin. It does go through the origin, so is it proportional? Proportional has to be two things. It has to go through the origin, which this one does. And the other thing I want is, is that a line? No, it has an arc on it. So this is not, not proportional. And it is not linear. But that is the function, the graph of x squared.